Josh Christopher is such a special player, man. I mean, literally a week ago, I made a video titled, Josh Christopher is about to take over the NBA, and boy was I right, as he comes away with the 2024 Summer League MVP. Christopher, deep three for the win. Josh Christopher with one more beat to an open now I understand that that's Summer League and not the actual NBA, but I want to look through all the previous Summer League MVPs because they've all had a pretty substantial impact in the NBA. So there's not too many of them. It started in 2006. So we'll start from then and work our way up to present day. You had Randy Foy, Nate Robinson, Jared Bayless, all guys that had very long careers in the league. Then you had Blake Griffin, John Wall, Damian Lillard, all guys that were superstars in this league. Then you had Josh Selby, not one of the better players here. But then you had Jonas Valanciunas, another long-term NBA player, followed by Glenn Rice, probably the only other guy that didn't have a substantial impact in the league. But then as the list goes on, all these guys are great players or will be great players. You have Kyle Anderson, Tyus Jones, Lonzo Ball, Josh Hart, who we don't like over here. Brandon Clark, Davion Mitchell, Cam Thomas, Keegan Murray, Cam Whitmore. And then last year, Jalen Wilson with the Brooklyn Nets. So out of all of these, what, 18 players here, only two really didn't have a big impact in the league, and that would be Josh Selby and Glenn Rice Jr. But even those guys played in the NBA following their summer league MVP. Josh Christopher is not even on a contract right now, which is crazy. Him and Isaiah Stevens need to replace Drew Smith and Zion Poulin on the Heat's two-way contracts, and I think they will because I certainly think the Heat have made some stupid moves recently, but I don't think they're that stupid to let Josh Christopher get poached by another team. And when I say a guy like Josh Christopher, I'm talking about someone who is Heat culture personified. This is what he had to say after the game when asked about the culture. Sometimes it's something that you can't really put in words, but I mean, Heat culture is something that I've just understood from a message that I sent to UD. like. Bro, I'm trying to pull up because I know what you guys are going to get out of me and I know what I bring. So, I mean, I've been able to play basketball for a long time, but I think this heat culture thing just like brought the best out of me. Like, I don't think I've had a series of games better than this in my life, honestly. He's obviously referencing that UD story that I've told many times on the channel. So if you haven't heard it, I'll say it one more time because it truly is a beautiful thing. But obviously, Josh was a first round pick in Houston. He had some other guys playing ahead of him. So he didn't really get a chance to show what he can do. That was back in 2019. So he was kind of outcasted. He was in the G League, played a couple seasons there. And then he reached out to Udonis Haslam to say, hey, I think I need that heat culture in my life to get me where I need to go. And UD was able to pull some strings, get, you know, Josh Christopher on the Sioux Falls Sky Force, now on the Heat Summer League team. And that's where we're really seeing him blossom and do all these amazing things. I think that is so incredible to see from a young guy because it's well known around the league what Heat culture is. And it's known to be difficult. It is not for everyone. So as a young guy to say, I need that discipline and that hard work and that grittiness in my life to get me where I need to go. That is an amazing thing to see from a young kid like Josh Christopher. And obviously, Josh Christopher was mostly looked at as just a shooter, but Heat culture is about defense. And that is certainly something that he brought to the table this summer league that pleasantly surprised me. I mean, maybe I was ignorant when it comes to Josh Christopher. I certainly didn't watch a ton of him prior to this summer league, but man, is that dude a dog on the defensive end. He's very athletic and uses that athleticism to hound guys on the defensive end, an absolute pest. Really reminds me of Gabe Vincent in that regard, or, or Kalen Martin. I think that's a pretty great comparison because I remember when the Heat got Kalen Martin, there was a lot of rumors that he was like a versatile, athletic, offensive scorer. And obviously, Caleb did show that he can do that, but he got his minutes by earning them on the defensive end. And that's what we're seeing Josh happen as well. He's absolutely staying in front of guys, showing 100% effort. There was the one play he dove into the stands for the loose ball. That's heat culture. In the championship game, he had a foul where he basically bulldozed Scottie Pippen. Now, it wasn't dirty. It was a loose ball for half a second. Josh kind of dove, but he was too late at that point, kind of trucked Pippen. But if, if you're going to commit a stupid foul, at least make it an aggressive one. I'm not saying, obviously, don't try to hurt no one. That's not heat culture. But he was trying to, you know, be aggressive, die for the loose ball. 
and that is that heat culture effort of Josh Christopher. And on top of all of that heart, he's truly one of the most unselfish players I've ever seen. This is him in the locker room after his 23 point amazing performance in the semifinals versus the Warriors. And this was Josh immediately after receiving the MVP last night. But what does it feel like to get this MVP trophy? Uh, I mean, this is cool, but honestly, like, <laughs> uh, bro, I'll, we wouldn't do this if it wasn't for y'all, like, at all, bro. Like, I could take an MVP trophy, but, like, shout out to all you guys, Dan, Weez, bro, I was with Cole, a CD, man, man in the suit. Like, we've been grinding from the start of this season. I got waved at the beginning of the year, found my way to Sioux Falls with these guys and now we win. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He continues to show love for his teammates. And that's truly one of the most amazing things when you consider the stage it's on. That guy doesn't have a contract. It would be so easy for him to be jealous or have a negative attitude towards the rest of the team. But I mean, you can really say that with everyone. That's why I keep talking about how incredible it is that all of these guys enjoy each other's success because they're literally fighting for their careers. They're fighting for their lives. You have a guy like Zion Poulin who was immediately signed to a two-way and then he was barely getting PT. But instead of sitting there and pouting, he's rooting for his team on and that is why this team was successful. Enjoying each other's success is one of the oldest spoisms, and this team encapsulates that. And Christopher, the guy with the most NBA experience, it starts with him. You can tell the rest of the team looks at him as a captain and everyone else falls into line. That is a guy that Eric Spolstra would love to have on his roster. I've been talking for like eight minutes and still didn't even mention his offense, which really shows how special and versatile a player he is because people really just thought of someone who was solely a scorer when they looked at Josh Christopher. But don't get me wrong, he certainly brings that to the table too, as he had numerous 20 point games, scoring in a variety of ways, hitting difficult threes, getting into the lane, left hand finish, right hand finish, dunking on people time and time again but he's also shown the ability to be an excellent playmaker we saw him connect with khalil Ware multiple times on lobs we've seen him find palel larson back door so he is way more than just someone who can get a bucket but if the game is close and it's down the stretch and you need a score there is not many better people to look for than josh christopher because he has shown that he is a big time player I mean, we can go back to his 20 points fourth quarter performance versus OKC, where he just got insanely hot. One of the wildest heat checks I've ever seen. You can go back to the semifinals versus the Warriors, where he was hitting clutch shot after clutch shot and won fadeaways for the lead. Or you can go back to the championship game where in that fourth quarter, he was sitting three after three after three in overtime, hit the monster three to give you the lead. And these aren't some wide open shots after bad defense. The level of difficulty on all of these shots is absolutely insane. But Josh Christopher is a big time player, so they're all cash and he's clearly someone that the Miami Heat cannot let go. But let me know y'all thoughts down below. What do you think of Josh Christopher? Do you think he deserves a two-way spot? Or do you think it should go to someone like Alondis Williams, who has also been playing very well? So I think there's a debate there. But I'll be reading all the comments, so let me know what you're thinking. Make sure to like the video and subscribe because it genuinely does help me out a lot. I'm super hyped from last night. I hope y'all enjoyed as well. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace out. Look, pull up in the city, trying to get that dead fast sight. Do it on my own, I don't need no dead weight. Like, had to kill him off, yeah, I need a headspace. You know this homegrown bitch don't offend me. Hmm.